Yo, what is up everybody? I am Mama Yoshiko. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome back to my channel with the Freaker. It is literally 4.30 a.m. right now. Don't ask why I'm up. Can someone like knock me out after this so I can go to bed? I am Toru. It's freaking 4.30. I didn't feel like freaking putting on the wig and all that, so here I am. For those who have been living under a rock, Fruits Basket the Reboot's been announced for a while, and about five days ago, episode one of the Fruits Basket Reboot has been aired on Crunchyroll and Funimation. And I did go to the theater showing of the Fruits Basket episode one and two. Thank you guys to the amazing beauties I got to meet there. I miss you all so much already. But I already saw the two episodes, but I didn't want to make a review or anything until everyone else got a chance to see it or at least a good most of you by now have probably got to see it so many of the comments were just like where's the first impression where's your reaction video you're not talking about fruits basket anymore or something I made another one of my comparison and contrast videos to the original 2001 anime and 2019 reboot I had to like crop it a little because of freaking copyright which is weird because the trailer I had no problem with that but for some reason so I had to crop the video a little bit just so it was able to be shown I'm sorry in advance but, but um, I hope y'all enjoy it anyway. This is my Fruits Basket 2019 reboot review slash first impressions. Enjoy. I have made several different categories I will be discussing about the reboot, and the first thing I wanted to look at is character design. A lot of the new character designs were made to portray the manga version more accurately. In the old Fruits Basket anime, Toru Hana's eyes are like a blue-green tealish color. However, in the reboot, her eyes changed to brown, and as a lot of you guys expressed, didn't like it, weren't used to it, but then a lot of you guys brought to our attention that Toru had having brown eyes is actually more accurate to the manga, which Fruits Basket PR team publicly stated that they will be portraying Fruits Basket's reboot with more accuracy to the manga in its full entirety. Toru's hair is much longer than it was in the 2001 anime, and in the beginning of the first episode, she actually wears her spring uniform. And the ribbons, the ribbons are yellow, not blue. However, on the cover of volume one of the Fruits Basket manga, Collector's Edition, Toru's bows are indeed yellow. Yellow. I didn't have yellow ribbon, so... Freaking, we're, we're going with blue, okay? Another character change I saw was Yuki's eyes. And a lot of people were actually happy with the changes that were made to Yuki. Yuki is supposed to have gray eyes and light gray hair. But in the 2001 anime, they made his eyes purple, and then they made some freaking weird, dark, purpley, gray kind of hair color. And a lot of people actually hated it. I saw so many comments going, thank and God, his hair is not purple anymore. So his eyes and hair have both been changed to gray. And for Kyo, I noticed, for him, I noticed his eyes were a little more colorful. However, the big difference I noticed in Kyo's character design was his shirt and his bracelet. In the 2001 anime, Kyo's shirt was black and his bracelet was white and black. However, in the reboot, you see that his shirt is now red and his bracelet is now also red and white. You see, changed to Shigure's robe color, which is more accurate to his manga color cover as well. Now let's move on to Toru Honda's friend Uo and Saki. What I noticed is that Hanajima's hair was like a greenish black color in the OG in the original anime. However in the manga her hair was black and also her nails are painted black which if you don't read the manga you might have not known on her cover she has her nails painted black. I see you girl. And for Uo she is wearing a purple tank top which is also more accurate to her cover as she is wearing a colored tank top. I don't I don't remember if it's purple specifically. And can we talk about how freaking beautiful they made Toru's mom? I mean, she was already freaking beautiful, stunning, a freaking queen, but in the reboot, as soon as I saw her, I wanted to cry. I did cry. I cried so much. I cried so much in my room after watching the first episode. I cried more freaking making this compilation video because I can't control myself. And for Tori's mom, they changed her eye color from dark purple to lighter brown. And all these changes are more accurate to the manga and their covers, which I think is interesting because then it makes you wonder why did they not do this in the first place? I can't answer that question. They have not let us down so far. Next, we will be moving on to the voice actors. I'm only talking about the English dub. I haven't seen the Japanese dub yet for the first episode. Don't kill me! I was really hyped to see the 
OG anime bag. Don't don't come for me. And as you guys know from my bajillions of update videos, most of the OG cast of the Fruits Basket 2001 anime have returned to reprise their roles. I love that in the theater they played like a little beginning interview, little pre-show with Caitlin Glass, the Queen giving all of Fruits Basket fans what we've been wanting and hoping for. However, if you have seen the Fruits Basket reboot episode one, you will notice that the voices are kind of different. And you guys have to remember too, this is literally a decade basically, more than a decade since it's been dubbed. So it's like, of course, these voice actors have grown, expanded, their voices are changing, so of course they're not gonna sound exactly like how they did in the OG anime. Not even if their voices have changed. Their performance are stronger, harder, more emotional changing. They've been doing this shit for years, so I'm not surprised that their voices sound a little bit different. However, what I love is that even though the voices aren't exactly the same, you still hear the integrity. You can listen with your heart and your freaking soul that these voices are the same. This is the same Kyo you freaking fell in love with. This is the same Shigure you freaking loved. They're all the same, baby. Matoru cinnamon roll. Her voice is a little higher, but then the voice is just so much more pure. I was just like, wow. Like, you can still tell it's them. When I first heard Shigure's, I was even like, whoa, was that even Shigure? It, it, it is, right? But as soon as you heard that freaking teaser voice, the baby's back! It wasn't until I heard him freaking laughing at Toru for being in a tent, I was like, that's my baby. That's my baby. That's Shigure. And for Yuki and Kyo, you can tell that their voices have changed and developed, but you can freaking still tell they are the same character and that they've grown along with these roles. Reading all the freaking interviews and stuff, how this anime and this opportunity for them means so much to them as well as for the people who freaking heard them, it's us. Ah, it is, it's so wholesome, dude! Next, let's talk about the animation. The animation, of course, you see, is so much more detailed from freaking the hair strands falling, the freaking beautiful shonen lovey dovey kind of bubbly romancy scenes. A part of the animation that I love so much is the coloring of the smoke when they transform. So much more vibrant in the reboot, and I was like, ah, oh, shit, it's beautiful. Another thing that I really loved about the animation is that at the end, when they transform into the animals, that the movie movement of the characters is a lot more realistic to the actual animals. Like when freaking Toru picked up Kyo when he was a cat and his legs moved, that's how cats freaking move. I'm not spoiling episode 2 for anyone, but there is a scene of Kyo and I'm like, that's a fucking cat. It's crazy how much detail they put for these human characters to accurately execute the movement of the animals they possess. Next category is music. I know a lot of people were really, really bummed that like freaking for Fruits Basket, the original ending and opening were not part of the reboot yet. I'm freaking hoping, we'll, I'm hoping we get a tribute somewhere. But I wasn't mad about it. I thought the ending was beautiful and I was crying in the club so much. And I noticed as well that they did not use any of the OG soundtrack, however, I'm not freaking mad about it at all. Even though I do miss the OG classic iconic music, I loved the more modern classical cinematic music they used with the reboot. Freaking the scene when Toru's freaking talking to Shigure about her mom dying, the freaking music, it like, bam, like, it was so powerful for me. That part right there hit so much harder than it did in the OG. The part when Yuki turned to Toru when they were walking after school. The music is different. It is different. It's more modern. It's more cinematic, but it is beautiful and it's so powerful. There was something specifically I felt. Like, let me know if you guys feel this too. Like in the OG anime, like when you see them, you have like this, there isn't really a background. It's like a color or it's like a faded background. But but in the reboot, you see the whole room when they were cooking the home economics class or whatever. In the OG anime, it was just like blue in the background and like no one moving. But in the reboot, you see that freaking classroom. You see how big Shigure's house is. You see how freaking large and huge that freaking forest they live in really is. There's so much more dimension of their entire world. And just to put out there, this is an update modern anime compared to when this anime was made in freaking 2001. The anime 
and the industry in itself has developed so much in the past freaking 20 years. Like this was how anime was and this is what we can do now. This section will be things I noticed that were different from the OG to the reboot. One thing I definitely did notice was the difference of the scene sequence. In the OG anime, when Toru brings up her mother and her past and moving to her grandpa and living in the tent, in the OG anime, she brought up her backstory during cooking class with her friends Uo and Hana. However, in the reboot, she talked about her backstory after walking with Yuki. And after that whole leaf scene, that was, oh my god, that scene was so beautiful. That scene was so beautiful! However, this change of scene sequence was actually more accurate to the manga. I went back to Freeze Basket Volume 1 and I saw that is exactly how they did it. She would talk about her backstory and then she freaking stood up in pride and then it faded to her being at work. Things that were only in the manga that did not appear in the OG that appeared in the reboot. If you have not read the manga and you don't want to be spoiled, leave freaking now. Three, two, hi is who want to be spoiled. One thing, when I was in the theater, this scene made the whole crowd, the whole theater, gasp for air. Wigs were flying. Everyone in that theater was quaking. <laughs> During the scene where Tori is with Yuki, about to join the Somas in this new life, she has a flashback to her mother, and you see a young boy putting a hat on young Toru. If you don't, if you haven't read the manga, you have no fucking clue what this means. You're seeing parts that were completely skipped out of the OG and like forgotten, thrown away, and now you know what freaking ride we're going on, people. Buckle up, Buttercup. This is gonna be a freaking ride. Ooh, freaking, it is everything Fruits Basket deserves and more. If you have not seen it, go check out Funimation because they have the English dub. If you have Crunchyroll, the episode one is already up there subbed. I believe that their weekly premiere for each episode is on Fridays, but overall, I freaking loved the first episode. A lot of people were like, ah, oh, they were freaking shipping the Toru Yuki ship so hard in the first episode, and I'm like, y'all like ready. Y'all ain't ready for episode two! I'm not, I'm ready to freaking cry again. I'm ready. Hit me, hit me funny, hit me. 10 out of 10, five out of five rice balls, 20 out of 20 freaking angry kill kitty emojis. I freaking loved it so much. Let me know what you guys think of this video. Let me know if you want me to do more of these. They will be releasing more and more characters as there are so many characters that are not released yet. But let me know what you guys want to see from me, whether you want me to do like weekly reviews of the episode or if you want me to like wait a couple episodes or maybe by season. And thank you guys so much for watching. Before we go, we got Showstopper to announce ya. This week's showstopper is Saki Nadeshiko. Thank you so much, Boo, for all your love and support. It means the world to me. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know any other things you want me to talk about in the comments below. Make sure to like this video. Let me know you enjoyed it. And make sure to subscribe. Join the freaking Weeb fam. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for joining my Weeb family. I love you very much, and I will see you next time. Bye.